Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's pour. Tonight's pour is a commission piece. It's going to be of a monster truck. Um, I haven't done a monster truck one before, but uh, I don't see any problem with it. It's a little bit bigger. I'm still going to use a 10 by 20 canvas. Um, because I'm kind of crunched for time and I normally would maybe get, this one's a little bit bigger and heavier, so I would normally get a wooden canvas. But I don't think I'm going to have time. I've got a show coming up this weekend. So I'll be tied up all day Saturdays, which which is when I usually go to Hobby Lobby. They're the ones that I get them from. I usually get them at 50% off. I probably would get a 12 by 24 for this size. but And I have to have it done by next week. So uh, the middle of next week. So I just need to really just get on it. So I'm just going to use my regular 10 by 20 canvases. I found out I only have three left. So I need to get some more of those as well. And I'm doing two of them. This one is El Toro Loco. It's a neat looking thing. I've never, I don't watch monster truck stuff. So, but uh, it's kind of neat. It's got the horns on it. And uh, so my friend, uh, this is for his little boy for a birthday coming up next week. And they love the monster truck stuff. And it, the birthday party is going to be monster truck themed. So, El Toro Loco, he actually bought these, and the Grave Digger is the other one. And he actually bought these and dropped them off at the house today while I was at work, so I could get started on these. So, um, I think with this one, I'm just going to do this one tonight. I'll probably do that one tomorrow night. Like I said, I got a show Saturday. Today's Thursday. And, uh, so I can get these started. So I'm going to go with a black background and then the fire coming out the back for this one. That one, I'm going to shoot him a text and ask him exactly what colors he wants. Um, but it might be black with the, the fluorescent green coming out the back because that's kind of a fluorescent green. Kind of like the Ghostbusters one I did. Uh, so we'll see if that's kind of the colors he wants to go with. So it probably will be. So I got my canvas out here and I got to mix the paints. And then we can get started. All right, I got my paints poured or mixed. Ugh, it's been a long day. So I got them mixed and we'll get started on this. Looks like I had a few lumpy things in my flow troll. I'm one of those that does not use a, I don't know if they, what is it called, a filter or a strainer on their flow trawl. If, if it's in there, I usually can get it picked out. If it gets in the paint, I can, it's usually not a big deal to get it off out of the paint. I haven't ruined any paintings because of it. Just one of those things you deal with when it comes up. I don't go to... Maybe I'm just a lazy artist. I don't know. I just don't, I just don't feel like going that extra mile and straining all that. It's probably why I don't ever mix paints ahead of time. I just do what I need because it just takes too long to get all those mixed and... pre-mixed even though it would be I'm sure it would probably be speedier but I just don't have the patience to sit there and mix all those paints take hours to mix paints I'd rather be painting and then getting on with the rest of the evening or the day just depends on what I'm doing So I was getting low on my distilled water. I have it in a little, uh, I guess you kind of call it a squirt bottle, a ketchup, like an old ketchup bottle. Like you'd see in the old days, the, in the restaurants. So I was getting low, so I thought I would fill it up while I was low on another one, but I had bought a gallon. They're like 90 cents at Walmart or whatever. chunk right there see it's out so 
So anyway, I noticed I had it sitting here on the floor underneath the table. I noticed it's, it's kind of tilted, which it should just not be tilted because it's sitting on the floor. So I pick it up and I notice there's water dripping out of it. So I got shoot, I got a leak somewhere. And I, there's a little slit at the bottom of the, you know, the one of the corners. So I set it on its side so it won't drip anymore. It's not dripping a lot, but it's dripping. So I tape it up and just end up pouring it in the other gallon. And so and I don't have to deal with that anymore. So let's have to do that. Wasn't really what I was wanting to do tonight, but it didn't take me too long. see how wide this thing is so I just kind of make a little mark there so I know where to start Too much red. Mostly orange and yellow. a little bit of white, not a whole lot. Blow out some of these air bubbles real quick. And here comes the noisy part with the hair dryer. cleaned up so it'll be about right here but we'll get it cleaned up a little bit I can want to clean up some of this here, I don't need so much.
So I worked on the fire a little bit. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it does look pretty good. Uh, I'm really adding the, the flamey top part to it. The yellow isn't quite as yellow. It's more kind of a greenish than I wanted, but I think it'll still look cool. Um, so yeah, with that on there, of course I can put that right there and cover up some of that green. So, yeah, I think that'll be a, that'll, that'll be a good one. So all we have to do is wait for this to dry here in a couple days, probably by Sunday, and I can get it resin set on there, and uh, I'll have the other one about done as well, probably do it tomorrow night, and uh, we can have these ready by the middle of next week and uh, get those to him, and he'll have these for that birthday party. All right, this bad boy is dried. It did drift a little bit this way, but it still looks pretty cool. Pretty big fireball coming out of there. I've got my resin mix, seven ounces for a 10 by 20 canvas, three and a half of hardener and three and a half of the resin. It is pro marine resin. Um, so I mixed it for, I did a little over two minutes. I'm, it's late, so I wanna get started on this. So, you just need to mix it enough to make sure that it's fully mixed and there's no, you know, you just want it fully mixed. And three minutes is what they suggest, but I I usually don't go the whole three minutes anyway, but I usually go about two and a half minutes. So I cut it off a little bit. But I'm ready to, it's getting late. <laughs> That's my only excuse. It's getting late. I'm getting impatient. I'm going to get it done. It's my own fault for waiting for so long. Oh, I'm going to have to get that later. Just drop that off the table. Car out of the way so I don't get resin on the car before I place it on there. So I had a show yesterday, it went really well. I sold a number of pieces, I think six or seven, at least six, might've been seven. I, I kind of lost count, it was a busy day of the Hot Wheels themed ones. So that was a good day. People just loved them. Most of them had said I'd never seen anything like this before. There was another fluid acrylic artist there, at least one. It was an art music festival, so there were artists there, and they had live music, which was nice to listen to, except it was a little loud a couple times when you're trying to talk to some people. I stayed busy in my booth all day. Um, I was the only one there in my booth. I didn't have any help, so I did get the people next to me. Um, usually what vendors do, we kind of watch each other's booze when the other one needs to go get something to eat or go get some food. Get this. So that's what I did. I watched the booth for this one young gal that was next to me and, and then, uh, I asked another vendor to watch my booth while I went to the bathroom. And that was the only time my uncle and uh, his friend stopped by, his lady friend, they stopped by. He was in town, so they came to the, to the show, which was nice. And uh, he was able to go get me some food from my food vendor. And that was really nice of him. I appreciated that really well. All I had was some cheese and crackers packets that I brought and a couple of bottles of water. So he went and got me a couple of hot dogs on the stands there. Had some food vendors out there. But, and I got some 
some good context. I'm actually met a couple ladies that own a shop that's I don't know if it was a gallery or what I can't remember what it was called. But uh they were looking they teach they have classes there of teaching different styles of art and painting and stuff. The one lady I talked to does uh, watercolor, so she teaches a class on watercolors. And so they need, they were looking for a fluid acrylic artist, and so they asked me if I would be interested in teaching some classes there, make some money, and I was like, you betcha. I love talking about this medium. Uh, I don't know if anybody that is watching this has ever been to an event I I had a booth at and you know talk to me but if they did they probably know I love talking about it because a lot of people come up and ask questions they want to know how I do it a lot of them want to know what what kind of art this is what do I use is it this is it that and I'm share freely with everybody what I how I do things and what I do when I first started doing the booze, the booth thing, the vendor events, and people would come up and talk to me, and my wife would, used to go with me on all those. Um, she doesn't anymore, just not because she doesn't want to, or she just, her job is, she's busy now with her own, her own job, and then Saturdays is usually the day that we have an event, and she's, that's one of her busier days, so... She doesn't, uh, isn't able to go with me. She did stop by, because this event was actually like two blocks from where she works. And she got done just a little bit before the event got done. So she came and helped me pack up, which was really nice of her. That's why I love her. And uh, so... But I was able to, uh, but she was always like, don't tell, because I tell people how I do everything. She's like, don't tell people how you do it. You know, it's a, she thought it was a highly classified secret or something and didn't want to give away all my tricks of the trade, but I didn't really have any tricks of the trade. I just, I learned how to do this on, I learned how to do this on YouTube. That's how I learned how to fluid acrylic paint. And then, so... And then uh, that's how I initially learned. And then you learn from experience and, you know, trial and error. But I'm like pretty much everything I told, tell people is stuff I learned on YouTube. So they can go to YouTube and learn it. I just like talking about it. So, all right. I think I got the bubbles out pretty good. So it's a pretty big vehicle. So I think I'm gonna put it right there. I thought about putting the wheels, kind of putting the wheels at an angle like that. Maybe not the back ones, but. There you go, now we got the El Toro Loco. Alright, thanks for watching. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, right now I'm I'm going for hundred subscribers. I think I'm at 89 right now. So if you could help me get to hundred subscribers, that would be great. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching.